And then we turn around, we come back, making God look like a pauper and a fool because we're acting foolish. We put no action to our faith. No, there are two dynamic twins. There's a left and a right leg. Faith and action goes together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have the faith for the work of God. Without the action, we're getting nowhere. Mm. Can have all the good ideas of how we're going to expand and how we're going to grow and what we're going to do for God. And, you know, and we just say praying them in. And Lord, we lay hands on every chair. That's the faith we got. Without physically doing out and doing the work, going out and inviting and saving the lost, physically convincing them, anakazo, he says, go, compel them to come, meaning graciously force them into the decision. Welcome to the teachings and preachings of Pastor Hugo from Grace Tabernacle Church, Mamelodi. We pray that the word of God comes alive as you listen in. Faith and action, the dynamic twins. Faith and action goes together. One goes with the other. If you see the one, you need to see the other to verify the genuinity of the one. Are you hearing me, somebody? So faith and action, the dynamic twins. Now, here in the book of James 2.17, James is talking, he says, Thus also... Faith itself, by itself, if it does not have works, is what? Is dead. It says, faith by itself, if it does not have works, it is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. Hallelujah. James is saying faith can never just stand alone. Faith must have proof. And the proof of faith is in its works. Meaning there is an action one takes to show your faith or to prove your faith. And that is the works. Meaning if you are believing, take action. You know, we believe, sometimes you're sick and you believe if you go to the doctor, you'll be made well. So even though you're sick and you feel like you might be dying or you're not comfortable, you, you gather sort of like your last strength and you drag yourself to the doctor. True or not true? Right? So you go there with a the hope. But how many of you remember many times you were not well and you went to the doctor and he said, no, this is not so serious and you were suspecting something. And after he said that, you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm actually fine now. Yeah. <laughs> then you feel fine because he has, he has not confirmed your worst nightmares. He said he dismissed your worst nightmare and you're feeling well. And all he did was just speaking a word to you. Now, here's the key. God has made us that way to respond to words. But God intends that we respond to his word more than anything. Are you hearing me? Now, some people will do this. If they are feeling the same way they do feel, when they drag themselves to the doctor, they won't drag themselves to church. Ask yourself, why? Think about it. There are things sometimes for which we would stay out of the house of God, but we will not stay out of Sasa. We will not stay out of home affairs. We will not stay out of department of labor. We'll be there. But coming to the house of God, you're too sick. Which means the question then is, where is your faith? Is this not the God whom you say is a healer? If he is a healer, why does your works not correspond with your confession? If you say, no, you know what, God, nothing is impossible and God can heal you. You know nothing is beyond the power of God and I believe God. And you say you believe God, but when, you know, challenges come to you, that's the way you go. Think about it then it means your faith has no works. There's a difference between faith 
with words and faith with works. Some people's faith only have words. They say it. They say they have faith. But when challenges come, they have no works. Now, you yourself, you have to gauge yourself. Each one of us, we have to gauge ourselves. How do you respond when unexpected challenges come your way? How do you respond? You know, you find people, they are fine, God is good and everything is fine, and something happens, and they flip 180 degrees, flat to the other side, and the same person that was, God is so good and God is wonderful, goes into God, where are you? Question is then, where is your faith? It was only in word, but not necessarily in deed. Now the same way, said to you, the same way nowadays, you know, a chicken, you can feed a chicken fodder and you can feed a chicken bone meal to lay eggs, but you can never fertilize the egg without a rooster. Meaning, you might induce the chicken to be able to lay the egg, but you cannot go to the shop buy the egg or take the egg from your chicken that you have induced and put it under a breeding hen, there will, nothing will happen to that egg because it's just a bunch of wind. It's okay, you can eat it. But that's as much as it is. There's no life in it. Now that is it. Faith is that fertilizer to your works. When faith comes upon your actions... Something powerful happens, meaning if you do anything, if you open a business by faith, if, if you now, it's one thing to have the faith, you open the business, you declare the word of God, but you also take the corresponding action, then whatever you do must produce. It means that seed can now be able, like we say, faith is a seed, that seed is now impregnated, it can be able to germinate. It's not just a wind pregnancy, right? It is fertilized. Now, that's the same way. That means, you know, faith that doesn't have works is just like a chicken who lays eggs, but those eggs means nothing. There's no future in that egg. Hallelujah. So, it makes me think of some, some people's lifestyles that... They couple together, but there's no reproduction in it. It is the end of reproduction. Think about it. Now, when it comes to your faith, there must be corresponding works in your faith. And therefore, James says, now look at what he says here. I want to show you this. He says in verse 19, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Well done, right? It says, you believe there's one God, well done. But what? Even the demons believe and tremble. James says, you believing God place you on the same level as a demon. There's a next level. So we might be having a bunch of demons saying they're believing in God. And we think they're right with God. James says, no, there's a difference. Demons believe and yet they tremble. What does that mean? They believe in the existence of God. They believe in God's creation. There's people, they believe in God's creativity and his existence. Meaning, yes, I believe in God. He's the one who created the heavens and the earth. Yes, you believe in him. You believe in his existence. But does your belief affect your lifestyle to the extent that you want to receive salvation and live for him? That's true believing. That's faith with action. That's what James means. Meaning, your faith must affect your life. Don't claim you believe in God and you live your old way. It doesn't work that way. Your faith must have corresponding action. Meaning, your faith cannot just be a, a confession or just mental ascendance. Meaning, you have accepted mentally that God is God and he has created the world. And though you are not an atheist, but you are not a true follower of Christ. Are you hearing me? Amen. 
There is, meaning there is more to faith than just a mere confession that you believe. Because many people do confess that they do believe, but in some cases, one of the things they've just done, it's, they've just mentally ascended to the level of and accepted that, no, nothing is impossible with God. That's mental ascendance. How do you know that can be tested whether it's mental ascendance or true faith? When the challenges come your way, how do you then respond? Meaning, if it gets to you now, it's good. Oh, God is a healer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Okay, when you're sick, what are you going to do? Now, you must demonstrate your faith. Whether it was just mental ascendance, meaning you have accepted it, that no, I, I believe in God. And you know what? God can do great things. Like some people are saying, no, I believe in God. You know, you, you want to evangelize them. They tell you, I'm doing my prayers in the morning. When I go to bed at night, I say, thank you for the day, Lord. And when I wake up in the morning, I say, Lord, thank you for a good evening. And you know, God, he, he really takes care of us. And that, that's their conversation to them. That is the Christian walk. That, that, that religious, you know, exercises. But there's no transformation in their life. They do whatever else they like, but their faith has not affected their lifestyle. So James says, that kind of faith without works is dead. Meaning it's non-existent. Faith must have cor corresponding action. Faith and works is like your two legs. Although faith gets a lot done, but faith alone is not enough. Because true faith demands action. Think about it. Most of you here are right-handed. Right? So you work with your right hand. If you are, you are, you can kick with your right leg. So it would appear that you use your right leg more and your left leg is just a spare wheel. That might never be used. You won't do much with it, but take it off and see how far you can go. Take it off. It does nothing. It has no strength. You can't really decide, I'm going to kick this person with my left leg, and I'm going to show him. You can't, but take it off and see how far you can get. See how fast you can run. So here's the key. It does something. It is needed. So faith and action is two legs that you need to stand on. One is ineffective and redundant without the other. Oh, no. One loses its purpose without the other. You need to have faith and action. Now, the problem is, you know, one day I've heard a, a great preacher say something that I really felt like, you know, oh, I, I felt so sad about it. He said, uh, prayer is not in the equation of success. Now, if you are foolish, you would think that, you know, yeah, there, don't pray because Bill Gates doesn't pray to Jesus and he's so rich and this one doesn't pray Steve Jobs and look at them, you Christians, look at you. No, no, no. <laughs> you didn't look right. Yeah. You do not do an autopsy by observation. You don't just observe because you need to go into the details of things. Why did it work out this way? Yeah. Are you hearing me? Okay. It's like some diet. Somebody say, I was on that same diet. It's not working. No, you didn't work it. <laughs> so it's not a diet. You must work it, isn't it? Hello. The same with faith. Now, here's the thing. God has created this world. God knows best how it works. So... Prayer is not always the only thing needed, but prayer is always needed. But here's the thing that some Christians did. All some did was praying and coming to church, receiving prophetic words, going back and doing absolutely nothing. That's why nothing happened. You should have been richer than Bill Gates. Than Steve Jobs. Meaning, if you coupled what you do with what you believe, you should have been further. Because faith empowers works. 
it puts, put, puts you in a higher plane. Are you hearing me? So if it comes down to that, you need to understand faith always works. Because God gives divine and creative ideas. But yes, there are people, you know, that were so lazy. They come to all night prayer and they receive prophecies. They receive a word. They got all of these prophecies upon their life. And all these declarations they are making. Monday morning, they are sleeping late. That's why I'm saying on Saturday, I'm having a business people's prayer meeting. From 7 until 8.30. If you think it's too early, I am telling you, you are not a business person. Because that's not early. That's not early. If you are in business, you, you, the latest you should be in bed is 5 o'clock. You can't sleep later than 5 and say you are a business person. You are not if you are still sleeping after 5. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? You need to put action to your faith. Without it, nothing is going to happen. Like, you know, some people believe in the great somehow. Oh, God is going to do something great somehow. How? How? And then we turn around, we come back, making God look like a pauper and a fool because we're acting foolish. We put no action to our faith. No, there are two dynamic twins. There's a left and a right leg. Faith and action goes together. Hallelujah. We have the faith for the work of God. Without the action, we're getting nowhere. Can have all the good ideas of how we're going to expand and how we're going to grow and what we're going to do for God. And, you know, and we just say praying them in and Lord, we lay hands on every chair. That's the faith we got. Without physically doing out and doing the work, going out and inviting and saving the lost, physically convincing them, anakazo. He says, go, compel them to come, meaning graciously force them into the decision. By you just laying on hands on chairs and that's good, but that's not the ultimate. That's faith. Where's your works? Are you hearing me? Amen. It means when it comes to your business, you just laying your hands on your product. That's step number one. That's your right leg. Where's your left leg? Are you advertising? Are you, do you know who's your customer? Have you, have you studied your market? Are you marketing there? Are you, are you getting in there? Are you making contacts? Are you building up a network? Are you just sitting there in a the corner and say, God is going to do something great somehow? You believe in the great somehow and I don't know who he is. But a God that we serve is a God that can do the impossible. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you have to act in faith. Now look at this verse. Are you still here? I'm just telling you what James says. Are you hearing me? Now look at the next verse, verse 20. James 2 verse 20. It says, But do you not know, O foolish man, that faith without works is what? Is death. If you have faith and you do nothing about it, you wake up tomorrow morning, chase the sun around the house, and tonight you're just ending up in the door again, inside the house, in front of the TV, a big cup of coffee, drinking people's sugar who are working and you don't even know how much sugar is costing, drinking all the milk and eating all the peanut butter and jam jar out, and there you go and, you know, just drink, making the zinc dirty the whole day. You're doing absolutely nothing but you're coming to church. You're lazy. Where's your works? You're declaring every week, you got to get up and do something about it. You got to go and knock on their door and tell them, I'm the person you are looking for. I have arrived. Here I am. But I guess you don't want to know that. Verse 21. Was not, look at this, was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? It says, even Abraham, our father, who happens to be the father, the founder, the originator, the starter, you know, the, of faith. It says, him was justified by works when he offered his son on the altar. God calls him the father of faith. And what did he do? And, and James says, he did something. So can you just do nothing? You got to do something. Amen. Hallelujah. Look, Abram, our father, was justified by faith. And sometimes our faith requires that we do take action. 
You know, think about the, the friends of a friend who heard Jesus was preaching in a house. They got there. The house is full. I know you and I would have said, no, um, tell Jesus this guy is staying two blocks down the road. When, when they are done here, the church is full. You can just come here by the street uh, and then just pass there by the house and pray. They realize the anointing is there. The Bible says they went on the roof, opened up the roof. That's faith with works. The Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, your sins is forgiven. Then the Pharisees objected. Jesus said just to show you that the Son of Man has power to forgive sins and to heal the sick, pick up your bed and walk. And the man was healed. When Jesus saw their faith. Sometimes you need to take action to prove your faith. Sometimes that action is instead of just laying at home and say, I'm so sick, I can't, do it. I can't make it to the service today. Is getting to that service. Sometimes it's proving to God. Think about, you know, I remember the story of King Esa. Now, listen, listen to me. God has no problem with you going to the doctor. Not at all. It's not a sin. Because doctors are not from the devil. The devil doesn't know how to do good. Are you hearing me? But there might be some that are under the influence of the devil, right? Just as there are lawyers and just as there are, what is it, pick and pay workers? Where are you working? There are nurses, <laughs> bankers that are of, of the devil, right? Like somebody say, these are false prophets. What are you? You are a banker? They are false bankers as well. What are you? Pick and pay workers, they are false pick and pay workers as well. So whatever you are, they are false ones as well. So it's not just false prophets. All of us here are falsities. I hope you are not the one. Are you hearing me? Yes. Hallelujah. So, here's the thing. Now, King Esa got sick in his feet. He didn't consult the Lord. Amen. He only consulted the physicians. Amen. Would you ever imagine somebody dying of a finger that got hurt? Of a foot. Now, look at this. 2 Chronicles 16.11. 2 Chronicles 16.11. It says, Note that the acts of Esther, first and last, are indeed written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And in the 39th year of his reign, Esther became diseased in his feet. And the malady was severe, yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. It says he only went to the physicians. He only went to the doctor. He then went to God. There's a reason why God, God didn't say he went to the physicians. He says he did not seek the Lord. Only, he only went to the physicians. Yeah. Now look at the next verse. So Esther rested with his fathers. He died in the 41st year of his reign. Look at this. A king got sick in his feet. He didn't go to God. Now if you go and read about the history of this king, this was a man, he wouldn't go into war without praying. And you know, some of you are like that. The way you were raised, you were raised on prayers. You were raised on miracle food. You were raised on God's provision. And as you grow up through life, you come to a point where you don't even pray anymore. You are just doing things naturally in your mind. The way you are thinking is good. If you need money, you don't even trust God. You don't give to God. You just bump into this credit card, make this loan, go there by this loan shark and do this. It's like you are, you, are, you are not considering God to say, Lord, what is your plan for my life? What is your plan for my finances? Anything you need, you have a card for it. You have credit for anything you need. God don't have a problem with you going to the doctor. The problem is when you don't even consider God. Hallelujah. It, the same with, you know, let's say you, you, you are just hearing, hey, there is this disease and if you don't take this vaccine for it, you are going to die. Without thinking twice and saying, Lord, what is your plan for my life? Am I going to die like they are saying? God don't have a problem with anything, but now if you do not consider God, all you are considering is what they are saying, then there's a problem. Where is your consideration of God? Where is your faith in God and in his word? There must come a point, if you are a Christian, your faith must have works. Let me close with this. There was a, in the book of John 16, a young lad who found himself among 5,000 men. We don't know how many women, could have been 5,000 or even more. 
the ratio of women coming to church against men is always more or double. And we don't know how many children. They're in the desert with Jesus. And the Bible says, Jesus asked the disciples, do you have bread to feed these people? They've been with me so many days. And now, all of a sudden, they say, no, we have nothing. And Jesus says, you must find bread to feed them. John 6 verse 7. <laughs> Philip answered, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One, one of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make them sit down. Now there was much grass, and the people sat down, and they gave the bread to Jesus. Can I ask you a question as we are closing? Eh? If you were the person with the five loaves and two fish for two days in the desert surrounded by 5,000 people. And they say, does anybody have bread to share? What was you going to do? What was you going to do? I hear somebody say, Heidi. The way you are laughing, I can already imagine. I I'm saying, the way you are laughing, I can already imagine what you was going to do. Think about it. Whatever you was going to do, are you doing it perhaps in these days with God? That what you have seems to be five loaves and two fish that's scarcely enough for you. How about giving some of it to God? Are you still hiding it? Are you withholding it? Do you have action to your faith? When it comes to your health, when it comes to your confession of your faith in God and living the life, or when it comes to your finances, where is your action to your faith? Are you hiding your five loaves and two feet? And so, no, anybody, they're asking if anybody can contribute. I don't know. No, it seems like nobody has here. Think about it. Some of us are doing it today. We are hiding the little we have because we don't trust God to multiply it and give us 12 basketfuls of crumbs, which was more than the five loaves and two fish. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above you can ever ask, think, or imagine. But here's the key. Sometimes your faith just lacks action. The business is waiting for you. The job is waiting for you. But you are not knocking the doors open. You've been to two doors, and two of them have been closed. And you are too, you know, too proud to accept and to handle when people say no. Take so many no's. Just knowing, yes, is coming. Amen. No matter how many times they turn you down, no matter how many times they say you're unsuccessful, don't hear it. Just go to the next level. Say, no, I know my door is somewhere here. I need to knock on that. But you see, if you are so proud, you say, no, I tried then. You know, it's not for me. It's, it's not for you, yes, because you are too lazy. You are too proud. It's not for proud people. But it's for people who trust God enough to say, Lord, I know there is a job for me. I know there is a better job for me. I know that it doesn't matter how cocky the person is that takes the service, but if you're going to be turned down by the doorkeeper, you're not getting behind the door. You got to look past that person and say, it's okay, do what you want. One day you will have to hear from me. Amen. But you see, if you are too proud, you're going to walk out of your own blessing. If you are too lazy, you're going to let go of something God has for you. If you are too stingy, you're going to hide your five loaves and two fish and never receive 12 baskets full. You have to couple your faith with its twin 
action. Because some of you, your faith looks like this. You're jumping around on one leg and you are getting nowhere. It's about time you, you employ your other leg and you go smoothly about it. Why don't you stand on your feet and begin to